Now we are on module 48. So um, we're done with all of the logarithms and exponentials and modules 45, 46, and 47 were about the system of equations. Um, and they kind of reintroduced the systems of equations because now that we're in college algebra, we're going to learn another method on how to solve um, systems of equations, okay? And that method is going to be using matrices. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is learn some basic properties of matrices, okay? Um, and before we even do that, they want us to look at the equations and how you manipulated them um, to solve the systems, okay? So they want you to kind of look at the systems and now start thinking about solving them in a specific way, okay? So we know that when we were doing systems of equations, we had a method called the elimination method or the addition method, right? And um, the goal that method was to make it so that you could cancel out one of the variables and then um, and then once you saw once you eliminated one of the variables it was easy to solve for that one variable and then plug that answer back into the original one of the original equations and solve for the other variable okay what this wants us to do is it wants us to kind of express what we're doing as we do it okay so for now they've done something and they want us to figure out how do i express what exactly they've done okay just because you're going to be expected to express what it is that you do to these um, equations okay so it says identifying the operations used to create equivalent systems of equations and um, it has this problem here, um, system A, and it's got the first equation of system A and the second equation of system A. System B, first equation of system B, second equation of system B, and it has labels here on the side. System C, first equation, second equation. Now the question is, how do we transform system A into system B. So how do they make this system look like that system? Okay, well first let's examine what has changed, right? If you look at A2 and you look at B2, nothing has changed. So we are not required to do anything to A2 or B2. So any of these options that include something with A2 and B2 are not going to be your answers. Um, because A2 and B2 stayed exactly the same. So notice that the arrow here says they're going to be changing B1 or replacing B1. Here they're going to be changing or replacing B2, and that is definitely not what happened. So this is not an option. And then this one says after I do these operations, that's going to replace B2. We know that's not going to happen. And then after I do all these operations, I'm going to replace equation B1. That's still possible, right? So I'm down to these two um, situations. Well, let's look at, at A1 and B1. What did they do to this equation to get this equation over here? Well, I notice if I multiply 6 by negative 3, I get negative 18. If I multiply negative 7 by negative 3, I get positive 21. If I multiply 14 by negative 3, I get negative 42. So what they've done here is this option, and they've multiplied A1 by negative 3. And that result was put in to B1. Okay. Now let's look at the next one. It says, how do we transform system B into system C? So now they want to go from this system to this system. Again, consider what has happened. Notice that B2 
not change in C2. This equation in B2 is the exact same equation for C2. So anything that says you're going to be changing C2 is obviously not going to be an option. Okay. However, when it comes to C1, a bunch of stuff did happen here. Okay. It looks like um, they've eliminated a variable. Okay. And so how would you eliminate a variable? Which variable did they eliminate? They eliminated y because I still have x here. So looking at this system, how would you eliminate y? Well, if I were to multiply this whole system by a positive 7, I would get 28x positive, negative 21y, and I would get a negative 28. And then what happens if I add b1 and this equation here that I have in pink? Well, negative 18x and positive 28x is 10x. And then positive 21y minus 21y makes the y's go away. And then negative 42 and negative 28 make negative 70. And that's exactly what they have for C1. So identify which variable they eliminated it, eliminated, and then figure out what you would have had to have done to get that variable eliminated. So what did I do? I definitely did not multiply this equation by anything. What I did do is I took that equation and I added it to something else. So this is not going to be our option. Here's what I did though. I added the B1 to the, the second equation, but only after I multiplied it by seven. So that means this is my answer and this is what I've done. I've taken seven times equation two for B and then I added equation one and that was what allowed me to eliminate the Y's. And then that was what became C1. So it's important we kind of talk all this out because now you're gonna be expected to write these steps um, when you work in your matrices, okay? So before we jump into the matrices, we're gonna solve a couple of systems, um, different methods. So the first method is going to be graphically. Now you can probably do a much better job in Alex than I'm going to be doing here on the paper because once you draw the two graphs, Alex um, is using their graph function, and so you'll be able to identify exactly where these two graphs are intersecting. So for me, if I draw, um, let me get a couple of points, like zero, one, and two. If I plug in zero, I get zero. If I plug in one, I get two. If I plug in two, I get four. Now if I do the other problem, 0, 1, and 2, if I plug in 0, I get 4. If I plug in 1, I get 2. And if I plug in 2, I'm going to get 4, negative 8, I get negative 4. So let's see what that looks like. Um... I think I need another point, but it's a parabola. And since there's no left or right shift, it should be a parabola centered at the origin. So zero and one, two, three, four. One and two. Two and one, two, three, four. So this is gonna be a downward parabola like that. It should be kind of curvy, but I know I'm not drawing the greatest. And then symmetric on the other side, right? So it should be curvy. I just am not a fantastic drawer. Um, but again, Alex will draw it for you. Once you type in your um, points and you click the graphing function or the parabola shape, it'll draw the parabola for you so you don't have to worry about trying to make it look the way it's supposed to look. Now the line, the top one, 
If I graph those points, I get 0, 0, 1, 2, and 2, 4. And so if I draw that line, I don't really have a straight edge, but I'm going to use something I just found on the table to kind of get a straight edge. And we get that there. And then notice that there's actually two solutions. This graph is going to touch here. So this is a solution. But then it also touches on here somewhere. And again, on, on your paper, it's going to be evident. Um, but here, it's not so evident because I'm not using graph paper and I'm just trying to draw this graph here. But I'll note, I'll tell you where it does occur. It occurs at negative 2. If I plug in negative 2 into the top equation, I'm going to get negative 4. If I plug in negative 2 into the bottom equation, negative 2 squared is positive 4 times a negative 2 is negative 8 plus 4 is a negative 4. So this point here is really supposed to be there. It's just my line's a little bit off because again, I'm not a computer and so I'm not graphing it completely lined up. But where it crosses each other, those are your solutions. So the coordinates of this solution, notice that they both share that point, one comma two. And they also both share this point, which is negative two comma negative four. So what are the solutions to the equations? Both of these points. And if you have to type them in and separate them with a comma, then this is how you type in your answers. And that's what Alex wants, okay? So it's gonna ask you to graph both of the equations. It'll help you to draw them out. And then it's gonna ask you what is a solution or solutions, and then you give them both of the solutions. Now, how do I solve that without having to graph it, right? You saw me having some difficulty graphing and making everything line up and be pretty. Um, so what is another method that I could solve where I have a squared function and a linear function in my system, right? There is a way, and you cannot do elimination method. Um, well, you could because notice that this is y and this is y. So I could do elimination, um, you just can't eliminate the x because this is x and this is x squared and those are not the same so you can't eliminate them, okay? So we could do um, elimination, we just have to do it with, um, we have to eliminate y, we don't get a choice anymore. So if I minus 3x squared on both sides, I'm going to get negative 3x squared, my positive y, and then equal to positive 2. Just taking this term and moving it over to the left side. Underneath that, I'm going to write 9x plus y equal to negative 4. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to eliminate y by multiplying the bottom equation by a negative 1. What that gives me is... a negative 9x, a negative y, and a positive 4. And then if I add those two together, um, the y's will cancel like we want them to, and I get negative 3x squared, negative 9x equal to 6. Notice that you cannot combine the x squared and the x terms together. Those are not like terms. So then what I need to do is I need to solve this equation. Well, when I'm solving equations like that, I want my x squared term positive. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move both of these terms over to that side by adding them. And we can write it out if you want to. You can write plus 3x squared plus 9x plus 3x squared plus 9x. So I have 0 on the left-hand side. And on this side, I'm going to put them in order. My positive 3x squared in front my positive 9x in the middle, 
and my positive 6 at the back. And then factor that, right? I can factor out a 3. I can factor that quadratic. And then set each factor that has an x equal to 0. This factor does not have an x, so I don't need to set 3 equal to 0. 3 will never equal 0, and there won't be any solutions from that particular factor. So here I'm going to keep solving and I've got my two x values. So again, we know that a parabola and a line will most likely intersect twice, and I know the x coordinates of those intersections. But how do I find the y coordinates? What you need to do is plug these x values into one of these equations and then solve for y, okay? Now notice here, y is already solved for, it's already by itself, so that's gonna be the one that I choose to plug these numbers into. Otherwise, I'd have to plug it in here and then move that term over in order to figure out what y is. It's a little bit more work. So three times negative two squared plus two, I get four, 12 plus two is 14. And here we're gonna plug in negative one. I get one times three is three plus two is five. So what are the solutions? It's negative two for x and 14 for y and negative one for x and five for y. These are the two solutions. Okay, let me stop the video here and then I'm going to continue with another one.